So this is a very short intro of how to use Settle 3D for calculating stress distribution. How do we do this when the case is so complicated that those solutions don't really apply? So I'm going to show you how, how we could do that in um, Settle. So Settle 3D is a program that you have. Well, um, I just got an email from Rock Science today saying they're going to send you out your codes uh, any day now. So download the program. <laughs> And then as soon as you get your code, you, or, uh, you can install it, and they'll give you a, they'll be emailing you a, a whatever it's called code that you put, put in there, and you'll, you'll have this. So this is, this program is Settle 3D, if you can see that at the top. Um, and I think I'll just try and, um, I'll just try and run one from scratch. So um, I think I'll just do a new one. It's a little confusing how they use this. I think if I just run through this, it will show you what's really going on. It's kind of weird that, that to start this thing, but you always start from analysis. You always start from project setup. Um, so, and the first thing it tells you, it asks you a whole bunch of questions about how you want to basically do your stress distribution. And if you look at this, you'll see a bunch of methods that you've probably seen before. <laughs> is uh, you can use the boost and nest, which is what we've been talking about. Westergaard is another elastic solution, and Westergaard is a solution that is, it, it's discussed in your textbook. I don't find it, I, I think the assumptions in, in either any of these elastic solutions fall apart so quickly that the, the, the additional, uh, what Westergaard assumes that there's, there's um, stiff layers that prevent lateral strain under things, and so it changes your stresses. You get kind of higher stresses. And that may or may not be a better so a model for the anisotropic nature of soils, that they're stiffer in, one, in, the, in the horizontal direction or vertical direction. But it's n the soils are so non-elastic non that I I'm not sure that, that uh, the details of that slight improvement make up for the fact that you, 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 there are so many other things wrong with this. So I, I don't find using Westergaard solution to be particularly helpful, but you will hear people do it and the details are in your textbook if you want to do it. Um, and if you've seen the, you know, the vertical two to one ratio for doing stress distribution, that's what that one does. So we're going to, we're going to use Boost and Esk. And you can do it, you can do actually a consolidation thing with this. When we get to consolidation, we'll use that. But right now we just, we just want to do a non-time dependent loading. And you can set this thing in certain parameters. We're going to use metric stuff. And then you want to go to your soils and you want to set up your soil properties. I'm only going to use one soil right now, but I'll show you you can use more. And there's, there's two different boxes here. There's one for consolidation settlement and there was one for immediate settlement. And I'm going to talk later about why I don't like those distinctions between immediate settlement and consolidation settlement. But from a computational standpoint, um, that you could actually use either one of these. The immediate settlement is always an elastic material. Notice you can tell that is because the only thing you put in there is, is the is the mod is the Young's modulus. If you go down here to primary consolidation, you notice that you can put in a, a linear material, which would be the same material that we just talked about. You can use Yambo's methods, and I have no idea who this person is. Or you can put in a nonlinear material. You can put in a piecewise. Nonlinear is just a piecewise linear material we were just discussing, right? So I'm just going to do a little quick one with it. I'm only going to use a, a uh, I'm just going to put in an elastic material. So this is an elastic material. The, the modulus is, is unimportant at this moment because I'm just doing a relative computation. So that's the material I'm going to use. And then I want to put in some loads. And notice that I can do rectangular loads and circular loads, but um, we already have solutions for those. So let's put in some uh, really strange load, if I can do this right, loads. So let's assume I have a, a building. Hope this is right. Loads. I have a polygon load. There we go. So let's assume I have an L-shaped building. And I won't get this exactly right, because to do this really right, you really need to tap the numbers in. Oh, that's pretty good. I'm going to put uh, just 10 units of stress at the surface. I could do this as flexible, or as I could do it as rigid. I'll stick with flexible for the moment. And so now I have this picture, and you can spin this around. It's really nice. Um, of this, this, uh, this L-shaped loaded area with 10 units of stress on it. And then I'm, I might want to know, for instance, what are the stresses across the, the center of it. So I'm going to, you have to put a query in to actually get the answers. And I'm going to put a query line in. So I'm going to ask, and this tells, it, it doesn't actually calculate these loads every place. It just calculates some places. So it's going to do it 20, this just says it's going to, 
space these things off in a way that it seems is appropriate and do 20 across the line that I draw. So I'm just going to ask it, what are the loads uh, across this line? Oh, I just missed. Uh, query line. Oops, I kind of went at an angle there. Um, and so it's showing me the distribution of, of uh, loads across there. If I want to, I can plot uh, the settlement. And now that's actually a distribution of the, of the, of the settlement. Notice that this changed. Uh, you know, so if I want to calculate the settlement, I've got to actually get the modulus and everything right. If I just want to calculate the relative uh, distribution of loads, the modulus doesn't matter. Remember, the one, you notice the only thing that was in there was Poisson's ratio. That's the only thing that makes a difference. Um, and I can actually, th this uh, over in this area right here, it's plotting the actual uh, values. And I can grab this slider and I can slide it down. And you notice that as you go down, the loads get lower. And as you go up high, there's a, you know, they get higher. So this is the way that you do the calculation for anything that's complicated. And I could come back in or I could put another soil layer in here and I could put a stiff layer. And you can see what the changes are. And all this is doing is basically doing a numerical integration of Booz and S stress distribution. This is not a finite element solution. This still has all the assumptions. Remember at the beginning, we checked Booz and S. It has all the assumptions that Booz and S stress distribution had before, except that it's doing a numerical integration of the, the solution for a point load. And so, so you can do any kind of arbitrary shape. And you can, do a, you can do a stiff layer if you want to. I can come in here and put a. I can define a, uh, a second soil. Let's see, add a soil. And I can make this one uh, very stiff compared to the other one. OK. And then I can come to uh, soil layers. And I can insert a layer above. And, and we're going to make that one say that's only one meter thick. Uh, but I'm going to have substantially different stresses now because I have this stiff layer. Uh, I know there's a way to zoom in on here, and I can't seem to do it on my tablet. So. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's very fast. Yeah, it's it recalculates it, calculates it right away. I, I can't zoom in, but you can see that there's, the stresses are actually higher near the surface than they were before because I have that stiff layer, and then it distribu you know, the, the stresses sort of get trapped in that stiff layer if you want to think about it. Or uh, is there a magnifying glass here someplace? Is that it? Oh, there it is. Uh, okay, let's try that. Oh, that's zoom all. Oh, cool. Yeah, see, can you see at the surface? So, so there's my stiff layer. You basically the stiff layer is really stiff, and it, it's acting like a footing, right? Because I made it like ten, I made it a hundred times stiffer than the other one, so it's kind of acting like a footing. But notice how that changes your stresses below that. Well, you can't. There's not good solutions for that in Poulos and Davis. If there are, you know, you'd be looking up tables and stuff. So when you get to those kind of solutions, this is what you want to be using. So I'm going to try and fin so I'm going to try and update. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm getting over. So I'm going to try and update uh, uh, problem set two to, I, I used to just have everybody do the stress distribution, do, calculate stress distributions um, through a spreadsheet using the, the Booz and Esk equations. And I used to do it for a bunch of different stuff. So what I'm going to do is simplify that so it's a simpler problem, and then have you redo the problem, the same problem here, and compare them to see if you get the same answer. And then have you do uh, uh, some reasonable um, applications in here, like have a stiff, you know, a, a basement layer where you got compressible stuff over uh, like a rock, and then have like a desiccated crust, which is also real common, where you got a stiff layer over a soft layer. And do a couple calculations here, just to so you understand how to do that. So that's where we're going with this. That makes sense? Cool. And that's all we have for today.